Are you ready? You freestyling? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Go. Oh, got him already. Got him already. What type of throw was that? <laughs> me vlogging today however it was supposed to be me and Walt but Walt chickened out so I'm gonna take over the camera and today my guest vlogger is going to be Sergeant Adams how you doing Sergeant Adams all right Sergeant Adam can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your career here um I've been here five years going on six I started off like every officer does on road patrol I went through field training and with yes, who you were my field training officer and it was right here in overtown right right here in overtown yeah i've been here i've worked overtown downtown coconut grove little haiti all in the patrol capacity then i did a majority of my career in overtown beats pst problem solving team as an officer and cra community redevelop ugh, redevelopment agency <laughs> i always mess up on that one that's why i always say cra I think I'm there. And, uh, but um I also did a year in special investigation section, gangs, criminal inter intelligence gangs detail. And uh, I'm back here as a sergeant for the Overtown PST. Always coming back to mama. See, yeah, yeah. back home with me. All right, so me and Sergeant Adam got flagged down. There's a citizen that advised us that she has a Marchman Act for her sister who is lost in Overtown and she wants us to help her find her. So what we're gonna do now is ride around Overtown. She says she saw her a little while ago. So we're gonna be looking out for her and we'll keep you guys posted. Say hi. How you doing? Where do you work? Overtown Beach. Okay, yeah. can you tell me what happened finally with the lady that was okay. looking for her sister? Well, we actually uh, we located her here on one court and fourteen street. Um, what it is is a Marchman Act. It's a court order to take um, okay. no the individual here to either no, uh, no, no, no. treatment facility or TGK. Um, the reason is because she she violated the, the court order earlier, which she had to stay in her treatment facility for 90 days. Okay, so this is different from a Baker Act, right? Marchman has to deal with what? Well, well this is, is really went to court. The Baker Act is when we, we take someone, depending if they need uh, help for any reason, they want to harm themselves, they want to harm someone else, we take them to a treatment facility. A Marchman Act is a court order given to a family member to pick up this individual because they violated some sort of um, agreement that they had with the court. Or it's relating to maybe alcohol uh, abuse uh, yes, or drug narcotics. Abuse. Yes, ma'am. Okay, awesome.
right, so we stopped them for the left tail light out. What was it that she told you when you made contact with her? Well, we stopped her for the tail light and the windows are pitch black. But uh, once we approached the vehicle, I asked for a license registration. She didn't have a license on her, so I asked her for identification. She stated she didn't have any. And I said, is her license valid? And she immediately stated, no, her license is not valid, it's suspended. So she gave us her name and date of birth. We're using our resources here to see and verify her identification. Can you point exactly where you see to know that it's suspended? Right here. All right, perfect. So that's how we know that her license is suspended. Now what happens after we found out her license is suspended? Okay, basically now what happened, I handed the case over to Officer Castro. Officer Castro is going to go ahead and generate the arrest form. He's actually going to give her a promise to appear because she did have a passenger, I mean some, someone with her who could drive the vehicle and um, she's going to get a court date later to appear for her charges. Reference driving with a suspended license. Officer Nodal arrives. He's gonna help us now with your partner, who? So, yeah, uh, K9 Yadik. Awesome. And can you tell us what your job entails? Um, well, basically, what we do is uh, we're always on standby for patrol officers that may need a narcotic strain K9. We come out and we search, you know, vehicles or any type of property that we have. Uh, we ex suspect there's narcotics, or if we have like any perimeter or a building search where a subject has run away from patrol officers and we come out and assist them throughout the search. All right, awesome. So your canine partner's name is what? Yadik. All right, so you guys are gonna meet Yadik now. So him sitting down, what does that signal to you? That indicates there's narcotics somewhere in the vehicle. I would indicate that it's somewhere in the rear. It might be in the trunk, it might be somewhere else, but due to the car having a lot of uh, gaps, the odor could seep anywhere. It could come out through any of these gaps, the vehicle, you know, so that's why we try to train the dogs to pinpoint, but a lot of in indications could affect the odor, such as wind, as, as you can see, we have a lot of distractions, so the dog struggles sometimes. But there's obviously some type of narcotics in the vehicle. And I would say it's somewhere in the rear due to uh, the indication my dog has gave me. Okay, so that basically now gives us the PC to go through the vehicle? The cause to search the vehicle due to his, uh, to his great sniffing skills. Awesome. Thank you. All right, Officer Castro and Officer Cassiano are going to help us search the vehicle. The canine gave us the probable cause to search it. He alerted towards the back of the vehicle, but our training tells us always to search everything. All right, here we have a baggie. You found something? Yeah. There we go. Oh, multiple here, bags put it, put of rock okay. Put, put it out on the trunk. So we can see it. Here we go. Nice. All right, and money in small denominations, concurrent to narcotic sales. Consistent with narcotic sales. So how much do you think is in each of those? I would say like 25 in each baggie. 
in each okay. little Ziploc bag. So you're estimating how much do you think there? Probably like About 100, 100 something bags of, of raw cocaine. Very good catch. All right, so well, basically what we're gonna do so everybody can see exactly what it is, can you open up that little bomb? That's what we call it. A bomb is a large amount of narcotics. And each are individually packaged. So this gives us the indication that these are for narcotic sales. It's what's consistent, they're individually packaged. All right, so as you see here, it's several small bags of rock cocaine. So we found the narcotics. Yes, we did. Uh, we want to thank your dog, Yadik, right? Canine Yadik. Uh, so what do you do now? Do you basically reward him or what is it that you guys do? Um, basically, we don't reward him out here in the street. The reason for that is because obviously this is a, a narcotics, but people in the street, they mix the narcotics such as this, the cocaine, with other substance. So the reason why we don't reward them on these, uh, these fines is because due to the other ingredients that are in the narcotics. So basically now I go back to the station and I'll put out some hides with our narcotics that we have that's 100% pure. Okay. And then I'll reward him with his Kong just to tell him, you know, he did a great job. So that's why basically here we don't reward him. Well, let me ask you, because I know everybody in the comments is going to ask, what's a Kong? A Kong is a little <laughs> red toy. I can show it to you. Let me pull it out. So this is the Kong right here. This is what we what I give him for, uh, for his reward whenever we do narcotics training. And then we do have the what we call a tug and with the tug we do obedience agility and all other types of uh of training we do so that we cue the dog whenever i take out the kong he knows we're gonna do narcotics training awesome so and for this this run here in the beginning he was a little distracted so when i took out the kong i showed it to him he's like okay that's what we're doing we're doing narcotic search so i got him back on track well awesome at least you know that your dog's on point thank you very much thank you for coming out recap on the traffic stop that sergeant Lanier did so why did he stop okay initially the traffic stop was um well sergeant Lanier recognized him as a known narcotics dealer so their probable cause to stop him was that he ran a stop sign and upon contact they ended up finding out he didn't have a valid driver's license he was detained um based on the narcotics investigation it's called what we call a pretext stop okay they wanted to stop him for a narcotics investigation and they stopped him they requested K-9, K-9 came and alerted on the vehicle. A search by the officers of the vehicle revealed the narcotics in the trunk of the vehicle. And we recovered over 100 baggies of rock cocaine, right? Yeah, it's gonna be about 125 or so baggies of rock cocaine. So and, what uh, would we charge this guy with? This guy's gonna get charged with um, possession of the cocaine, possession of with intent to sell, and also the traffic infractions, the driving while license suspended. Okay, perfect, that's a good catch. Great catch. All right. That's good. Yeah. All right. Awesome. All right, everyone. Don't forget to like, share, oh, yes. subscribe. Share, post, and this. No, no. no. Like, share. Oh, yeah, I got the right. All right. All right, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Subscribe. Oh, that's where she left the camera. She thought she, she was gonna hide you guys from me, but I found the camera. See, Sarge had the camera because she wanted to vlog all by herself, so I'm stealing the cameras. Now it's my turn.